welcome back and uh, to the to this course of electronic packaging and manufacturing and today we will continue with where we left off in the last lecture we had just introduced you to what is chip carrier and types of chip carriers so today what we are going to cover are ceramic chip carriers and plastic chip carriers this will be the main focus of this lecture and then we are also going to go into something called a dual inline package or dip dip it is probably the first type of um, package that was invented back in almost more than 50 years back and we will end this by looking at types of leads or types of these interconnections that come out of these um, packages okay so with that let us move on and look at ceramic packages ceramic chip carriers so ceramic packages so ceramic chip carriers as the name suggests the casing is made of ceramics okay now ceramics are not not uh, not inexpensive they are they are expensive so the cost of ceramic chip carriers is high so we don't use it in in you know in everyday use products like your cell phones or laptops or computers these are used for let us say military applications avionics okay which are the high end products okay they are also used for products which have very stringent sealing or hermeticity requirements and very high and also for high io count okay as i said these are used in high level products high end products the bonding material that is used you know the bonding material between the chip to the chip carrier and the lead frame that bonding material here is typically eutectic solder of gold and silicon okay a very expensive material it's inorganic so therefore does not release volatiles the melting point is very high so temperature wise it is stable so are ceramics thermal conductivity is high because remember that was one of the, the primary heat conduction path from the chip into the lead frame and then through the leads to the motherboard okay so high thermal conductivity is important so 296 watts per meter kelvin is actually a very high thermal conductivity to give you an idea thermal conductivity of copper which is one of the best thermal conductors that we come across in our daily lives that is 400 watts per meter kelvin next aluminum it's pure aluminum is around 238 okay this is better than pure aluminum the regular aluminum that we use the aluminum alloys these are around 180 200 kind of stuff watts per meter kelvin that is so this is way better than that so as a result as i directly said as i already said that this high thermal conductivity helps in the transfer of heat from the chip to the casing okay so these are ceramic chip carriers okay once again i want to mention that it is made of ceramic ceramic is not a cheap material so these are extremely expensive packages extremely expensive first level packages and not used in you know commodities in in uh, what should i say when uh, in in high end or high use products okay like your cell phones laptops they don't have ceramic packages okay these are used in very high end products all right so if you look at a ceramic package so let us spend a few minutes on this slide this is the assembly process okay we will see a similar one for plastic packages as well so if you look over here the first thing what you see over here is the lead frame okay so the lead frame looks like this so different leads are coming out from a central you know central podium if i call it so it is branching out okay and this is where the die or the piece of silicon or the chip is going to come and sit okay then this is going to sit on an on a base which is aluminum al203 that's the ceramic all right and this is how it is now the die is connected and the connection as we saw before is done by a bonding material which is an eutectic solder of gold and silicon right with very high thermal conductivity so that connection is made so the chip attachment which is the next step is done so the chip is over there the leads are also there but then i have to connect the two and the way that is done is through this aluminum wires so these wire bonds that we saw in the picture remember in the the first picture when we saw that uh, in the previous lecture the very basic uh, configuration 
So, these are those wire bonds probably you can see them over here. The picture is not very clear, but you should be able to see these wire bonds which is coming from several points different points on the chip and to these leads that are coming out. Okay. The next thing that we do is we put the lid or the cover LID lid or the cover on top and then we seal the sides using some glass glass sealant okay. and this is how therefore, the package finally looks like. And then what we will do is we will trim it off the trim off these these bottoms so that you have these pins or leads coming out of this package. So see what what we had started with we started with a very small piece of silicon which we are calling the die again die chip microchip microprocessor IC um, piece of silicon these are all the same things these these terminologies are going to be used interchangeably throughout this course. Okay. All right. So, that was my starting point this die the piece of silicon and this one is my finished product not well I would not say finished product this is a finished package to make it product this package has now has to be connected to a motherboard motherboard to a connector connected to a system and all that. So, then finally, you get this product, but finally this is the package. So, outside what do I see? Outside I will see a rectangular box made of ceramic and with some leads coming out from both sides. But inside if I am able to scrape off the top layer and able to see inside this is what I am going to see. I am going to see a piece of silicon sitting inside all these leads actually are connected to a lead frame and then I will have this thin delicate wires typically made of gold connecting the various points on the piece of silicon to these leads. Okay. So, once again let us recap what we just saw this assembly process we start with the lead frame and and a base made of silicon made of ceramic the piece of silicon comes and sits on this central portion of the lead frame. Okay. The connections are going to be made from the top surface of the die okay. and those connections are now done through these wires. These are typically I mean I am showing it as aluminum wire, but these days mostly it is it is gold. Okay. Some of the very low end toys and all probably will have aluminum wires, but uh, once you go but gold is probably used more often these days. Okay. And then there is a ceramic lid or a cover that comes onto it the sides are sealed the leads over here LED leads are going to be trimmed off. So, that now you have these pins that are coming out and so these are the interconnects. Okay. These are the interconnects that are going to connect this piece of silicon to the wiring traces in your motherboard. All right. Okay. So, ceramic chip carriers if you look at it they are of they can be of several types as is being shown here. I will I will just show these names for now because we are going to discuss them later in more details. One is flat pack okay. flat pack what is happening it is flat the leads are not taking this right angle turn as was shown in the previous uh, slide. Okay. Instead they just come out in the form of a plane. Okay. So, they fan out in a particular plane and that is why it is called a flat pack. Okay. Also sometimes called quad flat pack because the connections are coming out from all the four directions. Then there is something called a pin grid array. So, over here you have these pins that come out Okay. They can be just peripheral as is shown in this picture or there can be pins in different in several rows as is shown over here. So, that is a pin grid array. So, what I will see is of course, there is going to be another cover or the lid on top of the second diagram, but once we see that what what or once that lid is over there the ceramic lid is going to be over there what we will see is the interconnections are going to be in the form of pins that are coming out from the bottom surface. 
okay. and it can be a pin array it does not have to be just along the periphery there can be another layer as is shown over here you can see four pins on the outer layer you can see a few more on the inner layer. Okay. Then there is something called a lidless chip carrier. So, in the lidless chip carrier what happens is there is there are these cavities which with kind of a metallized surface inside. Okay. So, again these are classifications under ceramic chip carrier these are classifications based on the types of interconnections. Okay. And these ones as you can see these actually are sometimes even called the G lead carriers. Okay. So, the leads the interconnects actually turn I mean it's, it's, it kind of curves and in the form of a J and that is why it is called the J lead you see this, this shape. Okay. So, these are ceramic chip carriers I mean again some of these are in, in plastic as well for example, this one PLCC is plastic leaded chip carrier, but I mean the configuration can be both for a ceramic as well as a plastic package. Okay. So, that brings us to the next slide which is plastic encapsulated micro circuit or PEM. Okay. This is nothing but plastic chip carrier. Again, I am going to show sometimes these different acronyms because these are widely used in the electronics industry. But what it essentially means is this configuration, which is plastic chip carrier. But the only thing over here is the space inside is typically filled, encapsulated with this material. Okay, and that's why it's plastic encapsulated module or plastic encapsulated micro circuit. Okay. So, what does it do? It consists of an integrated circuit physically attached to the lead frame, electrically connected to input output leads which is the same as what we have studied till now and molded in a plastic that is the important part molded in the plastic that is in direct contact with the chip. Earlier there was a, a bottom frame a lid, but now this is all everything inside is plastic. So, it is not possible to move the lid and see these connections inside anymore. Okay. So, it gives it more protection definitely. So, but this is used for products with low powers, moderate I O count and lenient hermeticity requirements. Low powers why? Because plastic is a is, is not a good conductor of heat. All right. Next moderate I O count because the number of interconnects that can be accommodated in a plastic chip carrier is less compared to a ceramic okay. and lenient hermeticity requirements. So, this is important plastic as, as solid as they may look from outside always allows for moisture ingress. Okay. So, moisture ingress is inevitable in plastic. So, therefore, with time there will be moisture uh, driven degradations of these connections inside of these pins of these wires you cannot help it. So, that is why a product that is supposed to last 20 years typically will not use plastic material plastic uh, encapsulated chips, but something that is supposed to last for a few years like 3 years 5 years yes. So, if you look at your computer the memory chips are all plastic encapsulated many others okay, several others. So, what I will do is in the next class I will bring in some of these uh, you know some devices and chips that I have in my in my office and probably we will be able to see some of them. Okay. So, if you look at this configuration in this picture the configuration is more or less the same that parent configuration that we saw in the last class is similar you have a silicon chip you have a die attached what is the lead frame of the die attached paddle what is called and then it is connected by a kind some kind of a bonding material. And then you have the lead and the lead frames and which is connected to these points on the silicon using this wire bonds. The only difference is the bonding wires. Okay. The only difference is you have this molding compound which is a plastic material 
that fills in this entire space inside. Okay? So, that is the main difference with the ceramic in, in terms of construction of course, in terms of materials I O count etcetera there are lots of differences, uh, but in terms of just construction the main difference is the fact that this is completely encapsulated by this molding compound plastic molding compound. Okay? All right. So, similarly probably a little more detailed the plastic encapsulated microcircuit assembly flow chart. Okay. We are starting from probably from the wafer itself the first two are already done okay. the wafer and then the chip is taken out. Okay. The wafer is first taken the circuitry is you know through all these microfabrication processes the circuitry is there on each of the silicon pieces or the silicon dies and then it is diced through the diamond blade to get this chips out. Okay. And then this is the lead frame that I have the two raw materials have the chip and the lead frame. So, the chip is attached to the lead frame and then you have these wiring, uh, wiring wire bonding that is happens over here from the points the connection points on the chip on the top surface to these leads. Okay. So, all this wire bonding is done and then this is the one which is important where it is the encapsulation is done the mold it is put in the mold and this entire encapsulation is done. And so, what finally comes out is typically black in color or dark gray in color and that is what comes out that is your uh, package. Okay. And then what we do is we take this we kind of shape it trim it form plating and all that stuff and this is my depending on the type of um, interconnections that we will have this is how finally, my plastic encapsulated package is going to look like. From outside it is very similar except the material to a ceramic to a ceramic package except that the material is different, but again that is also kind of a rectangular structure with these leads coming out. Okay. And then I mean these are kind of branding and marking you will have the chip number and all that and then you send it out. Okay. So, this is how the package comes out finally. All right. So, again the different steps are we start with uh, with the chip and the I am just skipping this first one from the wafer we start with the chip and the lead frame. Okay. So, the die attached method happens to the center the die to the, the chip to the lead frame then wire bonding from the chip to these leads in the lead frame okay. and then this encapsulation which is very important which is one of the differentiating factors from a ceramic package and then we will we will take this lead frame we will bend it trim it plate it etcetera and then finally, my package is done. Again if you look at if you have a memory card you will be able to see typically depending on what type of memory you have you will be able to see some of these this typically plastic black colored or dark gray colored plastic encapsulated packages on this small memory card. Okay. All right. So, after plastic and ceramic packages and chip carriers let us move on to something called a dual inline package which is something we saw. Okay. It can be plastic it can be ceramic, but what is important is this was the first package that was invite, invented in the 1960s. At that time the chips were low wattage fully encapsulated at that time when it was introduced later in the ceramic version also it is available. All right. And so, what comes out is it is called dual in line because it comes the interconnections come out from both sides that is why dual and then they are in series. So, that is that is why the inlined part comes in. Okay. All right. This picture also gives you some of these dimensions these are all in inches by the way and uh, this is the structure. So, dual inline package is, is, a, is still a very common configuration that is used in many many electronic products. What are the advantages? The pins and connections are very robust it is an automated assembly we will see assembly processes later, but these are very amenable to automation in assembly line. Okay. The width of pins is increased near the body and as you can see here if you look at this picture 
the width close to the body is wider compared to the pins that come out. Okay. So, this kind of provides a shoulder, a strength at that location and then these pins actually get into corresponding holes in the motherboard. So, these are some of the advantages. What are the disadvantages? So, if you look at these dimensions, these are pretty large. So, therefore, the I O count is, uh, is pretty low. 100 mils is mils is milli milli inch okay one thousandth of an inch so point 0.1 inch typically is the limit of the pitch between two successive uh, leads okay so therefore it's limited variability limited number of connections and poor area efficiency so typically the amount of area the footprint that is required which is very very important okay the, the amount of space that your device that your chip um, takes up in your motherboard uh, that is very important by the way when you when you come up with small packages and all uh, small systems the the amount of space that you require to station a chip on the motherboard becomes very important it's called real estate okay just like land price is very very costly <laughs> and land uh, so you want to have most of it in a, in a limited piece of land similarly in the motherboard also the space available is very small at the same time we want all features so therefore we need packages which can have large number of IOs over a small area. Okay. So, that area efficiency for a dual inline package is not great, but then it is not expected also. You can remember this was the first package that was invented in the 60s. So, at that time this is just an emerging field. Okay. So, after that of course, there has been refinements and advancements, but still today we have better designs of course, but the dual inline package still remains a very popular. Uh, choice and uh, for or, or very popular configuration. Okay. If I look at types of leads now, dual inline package, let us take a dual inline package itself and look at the types of leads. Okay. The first one is as you see here, what we were seeing before. These leads come out in the form of uh, there is a shoulder next to the package and then the what you see is these pins go into corresponding holes in the motherboard. So, this is a pin in hole arrangement. Okay. So, typically again I am probably jumping a little bit we will cover this more when we go to motherboard, but over here itself you may appreciate that this pin has got into a corresponding hole the inside surface of which is metallized okay. and these holes in the motherboard are connected to the wiring traces okay. and this is how the connection is made. Okay. So, this is how remember we started with some of these contact points on the silicon. So, from the silicon the wire bonds were used to bring the connections to these leads and then these leads go into this corresponding pin holes or pin in hole or, or through holes and then and that is how the connection is made to the wiring traces inside the motherboard. Okay. So, pin in hole is, is important is, is common. Okay. The next one is what is called a gull wing type. So, here the configuration is in this form. The gull wing this is how it is as you can see. What is the use here? What is the difference? Difference is these points that you see are no longer holes. These are not holes anymore, but these are pads. These are wiring traces and then these are metallized pads on which this lead is going to be bonded most likely with solder. Okay. So, these are not holes. The other one is J type leads. Okay. You will have again these pads attached at the end of this wiring trace and the J and the lead is going to be bonded over here. Okay. Now, in this case the shape is in the form of a J.
this was a metallized pad. So, this is how the connection is made. So, in either the gullwing type or the J type, you do not have holes in the motherboard, plated holes in the motherboard, unlike the pin in hole arrangement. So, is there an advantage to that? You bet, because if you do not have holes, what happens? The reverse side of this board is also now available and we can have probably a similar package attached on the underside of the motherboard as well. Okay. So, then you have a double sided board. Clear? If you have holes, you cannot do that. All right. So, we will end with that. Uh, the, the overview of packages and uh, we will end today's lecture with that. So, what we studied as part of this to recap, we started with looking at the types of ceramic packages and plastic packages looking at their assembly processes as well. Okay. We saw the ceramic packages are expensive ones used in high end products, plastic packages on the other hand are used more commonly in daily you know consumer electronic products that we use on day to day basis. Uh, but of course, reliability of a ceramic package is much more than plastic package and so is the cost. Okay. And after that, we looked at the assembly processes and then finally, we looked at the different kinds of leads that are used both in ceramic as well as plastic packages. There are pin in hole types, there are J, J types, there are gullwing types and the ceramic parts, we also saw there are lidless packages and so on and so forth. Okay. And somewhere in the middle, we talked a little bit about area efficiency, which becomes very important. Okay. Given a certain amount of area, how many interconnections can I have? Okay. So, this becomes very important because space on the motherboard comes for a premium. There is a limited space and I want most ma maximum number of components and connections to be made. Okay. So, we will discuss all this because the importance of this later as we look at different configurations. Okay. So, till then, till the next class, have a very nice day and I hope you learned something new from, from these uh, two lectures, from the last two lectures. Thank you very much.